A very good evening aspirants, I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought you by Shankar AS Academy. Aspirants, we are almost covering 6 to 8 important current affairs related news articles from the Hindu newspaper on a daily basis. Aspirants, we are putting in lot of efforts to give you better and relevant content. So, please support us consistently which will be very appreciative for our hard work. Thank you. Now, let us get into the daily news analysis. Before that, I have an announcement for you. The announcement is regarding prelims test series. Shankar IAS Academy is going to start pre storming batch 1 for UPSC prelims 2024. The orientation for the first test will be conducted on 11th September 2023 and the first test will be on 18th September. A total of 48 tests including CSAT and mock tests will be provided in the test series. The fee detail for the test series is displayed here. Kindly register to the test series immediately and boost your prelim score. With this announcement, let us get into the news analysis. Today, I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspaper dated 1st of September 2023. Displayed here is a list of news articles that we will be discussing today. You can go through it. At the end of the video, you will also have prelims practice question discussions. So, try to watch the entire video. And a kind request to you all, those who haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, do subscribe and hit the bell icon button so that you will get regular notifications about our current affairs videos. Now, let us get into our first news article discussion. Look at this news article here. The news is that Assam based surgical oncologist Mr. R. Ravi Kannan has won the Ramon Maxesai Award for 2023. Mr. Ravi is currently posted as director of the Kachar Cancer Hospital and Research Center in Assam. He won the award for his revolutionizing cancer treatment in Assam through pupil centric and pro poor healthcare. This is all about the news. Now, in this background, let us understand few facts about. Ramon Maxesai Award from Prelims Perspective. Now, first, let us see few points about Ramon Maxesai. See, Ramon Maxesai was born on August 31st, 1907. He was the seventh president of the Philippines. He served as a president of Philippines from 1953 until his death in an air crash in 1957. The president Maxesai was known for his service to the poor people and good governance and he was one of the most outstanding global leaders of his time. After his demise in 1957, the Ramon Maxesai Award was set up by the trustees of the Rockefeller Brothers Fund and the Philippine government. The main aim was to carry forward Maxesai's legacy of service to the poor people and good governance. Note that the award was given for the first time in 1958. Since then, over 300 organizations and individuals have been recognized and awarded for their developmental works. Now, let us see few facts about award. See, the award is announced every year on August 31st, that is on the birth anniversary of Ramon Maxesai. The Ramon Maxesai Award is presented in formal ceremonies that usually held in Manila, Philippines. Now, who select the award is? See, the award is are selected by the Board of Trustees of Ramon Maxesai Award Foundation. The award is are presented with a certificate and a medallion with an image of Ramon Maxesay facing right in profile. Okay. Now, what is the eligibility to get Ramon Maxesay Award? The Ramon Maxesay Award was conceived to honor the distinguished service done by a person to the peoples of Asia regardless of race, gender or religion. So, the Asians who have shown excellence in their chosen fields and who are known for their selfless service to others without seeking public acknowledgement is the only eligibility to get the Ramon Maxesai Award. Since 1958 to 2008, the award was given in six categories annually. See the six categories are displayed here, you can go through it. Among the six categories, the category of Emergent Leadership was inaugurated in 2000 and it is supported by a grant from the Ford Foundation. The Emergent Leadership Award recognizes an individual who is 40 years of age or younger for his outstanding work on social change issues in their community and whose leadership is yet to be widely recognized outside of that community. To put it simply, an individual who is 40 years of age or younger and who is yet to be recognized for his outstanding work on social change issues will be conferred with Emergent Leadership Award. Okay. Note that from 2009, the Ramon Maxesai Award is no longer given in fixed award categories, except for emergent leadership. 
This means that as of now, the award has no fixed categories except the category of emergent leadership. Okay, this is all about the Ramon Magsese Award. See the award winners of 2023 are displayed here. You can go through it. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw various aspects of Ramon Magsese Award. See this topic is very much important for your prelims exam. So make note of each and every points that we discussed. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this editorial article. This article is speaking about the ongoing tussle between India and China. So in this discussion, we will first look at the background of the issue and then we will see the points mentioned in the editorial. In addition to this, we will cover the major aspects of India-China relationship. Now before getting into discussion, the syllabus regarding this discussion is highlighted here. You can go through it. Now first, let us look at the background of ongoing issue between India and China. See, recently China released a new map. This new map showed the entire state of Arunachal Pradesh, the Akshayachin region and the South China Sea as Chinese territory. See, this map not just angered India, it also angered other countries like Malaysia and the Philippines. See, the Chinese map made no new additional claims. This is because China already claims Arunachal Pradesh Akshay Chin and the South China Sea as an integral part of China. But issuing new maps while the territorial dispute is ongoing will only further complicate the issue rather than resolving the issue. So the release of new map is the reason for ongoing tussle between India and China. This is the background of the issue. See the editorial gives some insights about the ongoing relationship between India and China. According to the editorial, the trust level between India and China is at an all-time low. The editorial substantiates this claim by highlighting China's aggressive military mobilization on the line of actual control. And why is China mobilizing its troops? See, India since 2017 has been more assertive over its claims in Aksai Chin. So to counter India's assertiveness, China is mobilizing its troops along the line of actual control. See, the editorial also provides a solution to repair the ties between India and China. According to the editorial, India and China, instead of relying only on high-level interventions, they should rebuild their relationship from scratch using greater mutual sensitivity. And this will provide the long-term solution to the problems. Okay, this is all about the editorial. Now, moving forward, let us discuss various aspects of India-China relationship. Now first let us take the areas of cooperation. See the areas of cooperation between India and China can be further divided into political, economic and cultural spheres. Now first let us see about political relations. Although India-China political relation faced some hiccups, on the whole the political relationship has been quite peaceful. See on April 1, 1950 India became the first non-socialist bloc to establish diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China. The 1962 India-China War was a major setback in India-China relations. From the 1960s to 1980s, the relationship between India and China was still sore. Then the bilateral relations started improving after Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi's landmark visit to China in 1988. Then in 1993, India and China signed the agreement on the maintenance of peace and tranquility along the line of actual control on the India-China border areas. This agreement ensured stability in India-China relations. See, in the past decade, India-China political relationship has diversified. In 2014, during the visit of President Xi Jinping to India, the two sides upgraded their relationship to closer developmental partnership. Then the next major development in bilateral relations came in 2018. In 2018, the first informal summit was held in Wuhan. In this summit, Mr. Xi and Mr. Modi agreed to enhance their relationship and they also vowed to use established mechanisms to bring down tensions along the India-China border. Then in 2019, the second informal summit between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi was held in Chennai. In this summit, both leaders discussed the steps that can be taken to further deepen India-China bilateral interaction and to reflect the growing role of both countries on the global stage. In addition to this, leaders of China and India have held many high-level interactions on the sidelines of multilateral forums like BRICS, SCO and G20 summits. This is all about the political relationship between India and China. 
Now let us look at the trade relations. See China is India's second largest trading partner and as of 2019 India was the 12th largest trading partner of China. This shows the strong economic ties between both the countries. In addition to trade various Chinese multinational companies have set up operations in India and Indian MNCs also have set up operations in China. Apart from this both countries have established institutionalized mechanisms like the joint economic group and strategic economic dialogue. See the joint economic group is led by the commerce ministers of both sides and the strategic economic dialogue is led by the vice chairman of Niti Aayog and the chairman of National Development and Reforms Commission of China. See these mechanisms helps to take the economic relations of both the countries to greater heights. This is all about economic relations between India and China. Now let us look at the cultural relations. India China cultural exchanges dates back to many centuries. There is some evidence that linguistic exchanges existed in 1500 to 1000 BC. And this is between the Shangzhou Hu civilization and the ancient Vedic civilization. Apart from this, during the 1st, 2nd and 3rd centuries AD, several Buddhist pilgrims and scholars traveled to China on the historic silk route. Similarly, Chinese pilgrims also undertook journeys to India. and the most famous among them being a fahian and huan sang okay this cultural relationship extends to recent times as well to mark this relationship india constructed a buddhist temple in luoyang in henan province okay apart from this the success of bollywood movies and the increasing popularity of yoga in china also signifies the strong cultural ties between both india and china okay this is all about the cultural relationship between india and china Now having seen the areas of cooperation between India and China now let us see the strains in the bilateral relations see the strains or challenges can be subdivided into political geopolitical and economical now first let us take the challenges in the political sphere the first major challenge is border disputes see the unresolved border issues particularly in regions like Ladakh and Arunachal Pradesh have led to periodic military tensions between India and China So this is a potential source of conflict. For example, the 2017 Doklam standoff, then the 2020 Galwan clash and the issue of stapled visas provided to the people of Arunachal Pradesh are all the result of border disputes. Okay? So border dispute is the first major challenge. The border dispute has resulted in an increase in mutual distrust between the two nations and this mutual distrust has given rise to an increase in cyber attacks and cyber espionage. okay this is all about the challenges in political sphere now moving on to see about the challenges in geopolitical sphere see all the challenges in the geopolitical sphere arises from the geopolitical rivalry between the two nations now first let's take the indian ocean see both the china and india are trying to extend their influence in the indian ocean the increasing chinese naval presence in the indian ocean has worried india in recent times so this is one of the reasons for growing mistrust between the two countries then the next challenge is competition for regional influence india traditionally had influence over its neighbor countries like nepal bhutan and sri lanka but china is using its economic power to try and bring these nations closer to china so this is a major concern for india and these nations acted as buffers for india okay so the competition for regional influence is the next major challenge then the next challenge is china preventing the entry of india into united nations security council and nuclear supplier groups lastly the recent developments like quad and india's growing affinity towards the usa as worried china see china even jumped the gun and called quad as the asian nato okay so all these geopolitical developments have strained the relationship between india and china now finally let us see the challenges in economical sphere The first challenge is the growing trade deficit. See India is having a huge negative trade deficit with China and this deficit is constantly growing. The growth of the trade deficit with China could be attributed to two factors. One is easy access to Chinese imports in India and the next one is restricted market access to Indian products like agricultural products, pharmaceuticals and IT sector in China. so the raising trade deficit has also strained the relationship between india and china and the next challenge is very low bilateral investment although trade volume between india and china has continued to grow 
द बयोलेटल इनवेस्टमेंट बिटवी द नेशन हाज बी वेरी स्टैग्नेंट अकॉर्डिंग टू द मिनिस्ट्री आफ कमर्स आफ चाइना कुमुलेटिव चाइनीस इनवेस्टमेंट इन इंडिया टिल द सेप्टेबर आफ टू थौस नईनटीन अकौंटड टू ओन फाइव पॉइंट जीरो एट बिलियन यूएस डालर्स अंड कुमुलेटिव इंडियन इनवेस्टमेंट इन चाइना अंटिल सेप्टेबर टू थौस नईनटीन इज जीरो पॉइंट नईन टू बिलियन यूएस डालर्स दिस इज द नेक्स्ट मेजर चैलेंज द लो बयोलेटल इनवेस्टमेंट इज ए रिफ्लेक्शन आफ मेजर डिस्ट्रस् बिटवी द टू नेशन अंड द लास्ट मेजर चैलेंज रिगार्डिंग चाइना बेल्ट अंड रोड इनिशियेटिव See, India has expressed concerns about China's Belt and Road Initiative, which involves infrastructure projects in India's neighboring countries. India views some of these projects as infringing on its sovereignty. India has also voiced its concerns about Belt and Road Initiative in various forums. Okay, so these are some of the challenges in India-China relations in the economic sphere. Now, how can these challenges can be addressed? Firstly, as like the editorial mentioned. the future india china relations must be built on mutual respect for sovereignty and greater mutual sensitivity then to resolve border disputes a diplomatic route must be taken that is high level talks and regular diplomatic exchanges can help in understanding each other's concern and finding common ground in addition to this confidence building measures along the border can be done to prevent the escalation of border disputes into military confrontations then to resolve the issue of trade deficit China must grant market access to Indian products like pharmaceuticals, agri products, and IT services. India can also reduce its dependence on Chinese imports by proactively engaging with the Asian countries. And finally, both the nations can explore track to diplomacy to resolve disputes. Here, track to diplomacy refers to unofficial, informal, and non-governmental efforts to facilitate dialogue and to solve problems in international relations. See the Oslo Accords 1993 is an example of track to diplomacy. So options like this can be explored to bring about long lasting peace between India and China. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about the recent ongoing tussle between India and China. Then we saw about the area of cooperation between India and China. Then we saw about the challenges in India China relationship. And finally we saw some points about how the challenges in India China relationship can be addressed. See this topic is very much important for your mains exam. You can use all these points in your mains answer. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. The news is about the discovery of seasonal habitation of prehistoric man in Pedagutta near Hyderabad. See while conducting survey near Pedagutta, some archaeologists have spotted four places that are having grooves. Here grooves means a long narrow cut in the hard surface. like rocks that were made using hard tools the archaeologists observed that the grooves in pedagutta were formed out of grinding and polishing of stone axes during the neolithic period they have arrived at this conclusion because the grooves are located close to natural rock shelters used by the neolithic people as a seasonal camp sites so they confirmed that the grooves were formed during the neolithic period that is around 2000 bc See this discovery is significant because it pushes back the history of Hyderabad to prehistoric times. Okay, and this is all about the news. Now in this discussion, we will learn some facts about Neolithic culture. Now first, let us see the time span of Neolithic culture. Generally, the period before the invention of script is broadly divided into Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. This classification is based on the materials used by the people. during those periods now particularly talking about stone age see the earliest stone age in the history is called old stone age or paleolithic age then the period after the old stone age is called mesolithic age and the period that followed the mesolithic age is called neolithic age or new stone age so we can say that the neolithic period is the last stage of stone age See in India, the Neolithic culture lasted from around 6000 BC to 2000 BC. Okay, this is all about the time span of Neolithic culture. Now let us see the major characteristics of Neolithic culture in India. See, Neolithic culture is significant because it marked the spread of agriculture, animal husbandry, and human settlements. It indicates the transformation of society from a food gathering economy to food producing economy. Now talking about the agriculture carried out by Neolithic age people see the people of Neolithic age 
கல்டிவேட்டட் ராகி ஹார்ஸ் கிராம் காட்டன் ரைஸ் வீட் அண்ட் பார்லி த நியூலெத்திக் பீப்புள் வர் டேர்ம்ட் ஆஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபுட் ப்ரொடியூசர்ஸ் அப்பார்ட் ஃப்ரம் திஸ் தி ஆல்சோ டொமஸ்டிகேட்டட் கேட்டில் ஷீப் அண்ட் கோட்ஸ் ஓகே நான் டாக்கிங் அபவுட் த டூல்ஸ் யூஸ் பை நியூலெத்திக் பீப்புள் சி த நியூலெத்திக் பீப்புள் யூஸ்டு டூல்ஸ் மேட் ஆஃப் ஸ்டோன்ஸ் அண்ட் தே வேர் ஃபைன்லி பாலிஷ் ஸ்டோன் ஆக்சஸ் வேர் ப்ரைமர்லி யூஸ்டு இந்த நியூலெத்திக் ஏஜ் தி ஆல்சோ யூஸ்டு டூல்ஸ் ஃபார் அக்ரிகல்ச்சரல் ஆக்டிவிட்டீஸ் விச் வேர் கேரிட் அவுட் இன் த ஃபர்டைல் சாயில் டெபாசிட்டட் பை த ரிவர்ஸ் ஓகே நான் டாக்கிங் அபவுட் த பாட்ரி சி நியூலெத்திக் பீப்புள் வேர் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டு இன்வென்ட் பாட்ரி த பாட்ரி ஆஃப் த பீரியட் வாஸ் கிளாஸிஃபைட் ஆஸ் கிரே வேர் பிளாக் பர்னிஷ்டு வேர் அண்ட் மேட் இம்ப்ரெஸ்டு வேர் ஓகே நான் கம்மிங் டு த செட்டில்மெண்ட்ஸ் த நியூலெத்திக் பீப்புள் கிரியேட்டட் பெர்மனன்ட் ஹவுசஸ் யூசிங் மட் பிரிக்ஸ் as a result of these developments the hunters and gatherers began to settle in particular place know that the people of neolithic age didn't have knowledge about metals okay it is important to note that neolithic culture in india was not uniform but varied across different regions due to ecological climatic and cultural factors as a result there were multiple neolithic cultures and subcultures in different parts of indian subcontinent now let us see the important sites of neolithic culture distributed across india now first we look at the neolithic culture of north western india see the neolithic sites in north western india have the earliest evidence of plant and animal domestication in india some of the important sites in the region include megrag rana gundai sarai kala and chalingai okay next we look at the neolithic culture of kashmir see the neolithic culture in kashmir was contemporary to the indus valley civilization barzom is the important site of kashmir neolithic culture in this site one peculiar feature is that the domestic dogs were buried with its master and they also used handmade potteries okay moving on now we will look at the neolithic cultures of ganges valley and central india the important sites of this region include lehura deva and chopani munda Lehura Deva has evidence for cultivation of rice which dates back to 6500 BC. The people of this region used pottery with cord impression on the surfaces. Okay. Now next we look at the Neolithic culture of South India. See the Neolithic centers of South India are concentrated in Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and northwestern part of Tamil Nadu. Some of the important Neolithic sites of this region are Vatkal and Hallur in Karnataka. Nagarjuna Konda, Ramaburam and Veeraburam in Andhra Pradesh and Payyampalli in Tamil Nadu. See one unique feature of this region is that the ash mounds are found in the center of settlements. Okay. Now finally we shall see about the Neolithic culture of Northeastern India. See in Northeastern India the Neolithic culture appears very late. That is around 2500 to 1500 BC. Some of the important sites of this region includes Tajoli Hadding and Tajoli. Sarutaru in Assam this region has the evidence for shifting cultivation apart from this stone and wooden memorials are built for the dead in this region okay so these are the various neolithic sites in different regions across india overall the neolithic cultures were significant because they lead to development of advanced civilizations such as indus valley civilization and vedic period cultures okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion is all about the time span of neolithic culture then we saw about the characteristics of neolithic culture and finally we saw some important sites of neolithic culture across india see this topic is very much important for your prelims exam so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this article from science page earlier this month the parliamentary standing committee on health and family welfare tabled its 148th report in the parliament The report is titled Mental Health Care and Its Management in Contemporary Times. So it is based on this report only. The article here is written. This article highlights some of the important points from the report. So in our discussion today we will learn all the points provided in the news article. Now first let us look at the definition of mental health as given by the report. According to the report mental health refers to a state of well-being that enables people to cope up with stress of life now i will explain to you in better way with an example now let us imagine someone named ibrahim see ibrahim is usually happy and he is able to bounce back from setbacks 
He also talks about his feelings with friends and family when needed. Ibrahim also knows how to relax when he is stressed. Apart from this, Ibrahim also takes care of himself in a positive way when he is relaxed. So if Ibrahim is able to do all these activities, then according to the report, he is mentally healthy. In contrast, a mentally ill person is someone who experiences difficulties with their thoughts, emotions or behaviors. See, people with mental illness mostly have a negative view on life. They have bad motivating mechanisms when they feel stressed like isolation, aggression, procrastination and self-harm. Okay? From all these points, we can observe that having a mentally healthy population is important for any country because mental health is indirectly linked to the economy. See, people with poor mental health have diminished well-being and poor productivity. For example, in 2010, the economic losses of around 2.5 trillion US dollars annually were attributed to poor mental health. And it is estimated that by 2030, the economic losses due to poor mental health might increase to 6 trillion US dollars annually. Okay. So, addressing mental health issues of the population is important for all countries, particularly India, which is aiming to become an economic superpower. See, to make the population mentally healthy, we must first identify the challenges. So, now let us look at the challenges highlighted in the 148th report on mental health care and its management in contemporary times. The first challenge is lack of trained professionals. See, India currently has only 9,000 psychiatrists, that is only 0 0.75 psychiatrists per lakh people. This is significantly low considering the fact that 15% of adults in India are in need of mental health intervention according to the National Mental Health Survey 1 which was conducted in 2015-16. See, according to the World Health Organization, a desirable number is anything above 3 psychiatrists per lakh people. So, to have a minimum of 3 psychiatrists per people, India would need an additional 20,000 more psychiatrists. Okay. See, to address the shortage, the report has suggested an increase in the number of seats for MD psychiatry courses. Also, to address the shortage in mental health workers like psychologists, psychiatric social workers and nurses, the report suggested formulating short-term training courses. Okay. This is about the first challenge and solution to such challenge. The next challenge is lack of funding. See the total budget estimate for the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare is around Rs. 89,155 crore. Of this only Rs. 919 crore is allocated for mental health. So the lack of proper funding results in inability to create a proper infrastructure and proper research in the area of mental health. Here the report suggests an increase in funding for mental health. In addition to this, the report suggested using evidence-based interventions for developing infrastructure and other policies around mental health. Okay, this is the second challenge. Then the third challenge is the issue of treatment gap. Here treatment gap is nothing but the inability to treat every mentally ill person. See, to address the treatment gap, the report gives us three suggestions. The first suggestion is using the existing wellness clinics to treat patients with mental health issues. Then the second suggestion is using telemedicine to address the treatment gap. And the final suggestion is revamping the district mental health program to address the treatment gap. Okay. So these are all the three suggestions that can be taken to address treatment gap. Okay. This is all about the third issue. And the last challenge is the issue of stigma around mental health issues. That is the people fears about society when they have mental health issues. So the report here suggests creating public awareness using the national mental health program will help to address the issue of stigma around mental health issues. Okay. So these are some of the highlights from 148th report on mental health care and its management in contemporary times. And note that this report is submitted by the Standing Committee on Health and Family Welfare in the Parliament. Okay. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. Yesterday, the Supreme Court decided to examine the enforcement of regulations on the sale of green crackers. The Supreme Court also scheduled the hearing on September 13 to study the protocol to implement regulations or restrictions on the sale of 
green crackers. This is the crux of the news article given here. Now in this context, let us see some points about green crackers and its types. Now let us start with green crackers. See the green crackers are fireworks that are healthy to the environment. This is because the green crackers can lessen the air pollution rather than causing high air pollution like that of conventional firecrackers. These green crackers are designed by the NIRI that is the National Environmental and Engineering Research Institute. Note that the NIRI is a constituent of CISR. Now coming back to the green crackers, see some of the green crackers designed by the NIRI includes flower pots, pencils, bombs, chakras and so on. These green crackers are made from alternative raw materials to have a smaller negative impact on the environment and to minimize health hazards. It is said that the green crackers are environmentally friendly because they do not contain some harmful pollutants like aluminium, barium, potassium nitrate or carbon. Now coming to the question, are green crackers totally pollution free? The answer to the question is no. See the green cracker can also cause air pollution. But the main advantage is that the green crackers are 30% less polluting than conventional crackers. This is because the green crackers have less or no barium that causes smoke and emissions. In addition to lowering air pollution, the green crackers are also said to have a lower sound level than the conventional crackers. See the sound coming from green crackers ranges between 110 and 125 decibels whereas the sound made by conventional crackers are roughly 160 decibels. So less sound is also another advantage of green crackers. See despite all these benefits, these environment friendly green firecrackers are more expensive than conventional crackers. So this is one challenge that hinders the promotion of using green crackers. Now moving on to see about the types of green crackers. Presently there are three brands of green crackers available in the market. We will see them one by one. The first one is safe water releaser that is the SWR. These crackers do not use sulfur or potassium nitrate. Instead they are made in a way that they release water vapor into the atmosphere when it gets burst. So this will lessen the discharge dust in the atmosphere. Apart from this these crackers also deploy the use of diluents. By using diluents, the green crackers can control particulate matter emissions by up to 30%. Okay, this is about the first type that is the safe water releaser. Then the second type is star that is safe thermite cracker. Just like safe water releaser, the star also does not contain sulfur and potassium nitrate. These crackers controls particulate dust emissions and it also has low sound intensity. Apart from this, this type of cracker also discharges less particulate matter into the atmosphere. Okay, this is all about the second type that is the safe thermit cracker. And the final type is suffle that is safe minimal aluminium. See in these type of crackers the aluminium content is replaced with magnesium. So these crackers produces reduced levels of pollutants. Okay, this is all about the types of green crackers that are presently available in the market. See currently all these three brands of green crackers can be only produced by licensed manufacturers that are approved by the CSIR. And note that the Petroleum and Explosives Safety Organization that is the PESO is tasked with the certification of green crackers. The organization certifies that the crackers are made without arsenic, mercury and barium and are not allowed beyond a certain threshold. Okay. Now how we can identify the green crackers? See the green crackers are differentiated from conventional crackers by a logo and color. The green crackers have a green logo printed on their boxes. Apart from this they also have QR coding system. By scanning the QR we can verify whether it is a green cracker or not. Okay. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw various aspects of green crackers and its types. Now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article here, yesterday the Bureau of Indian Standards that is the BIS conducted a meeting in Chennai. The meeting was attended by various stakeholders including manufacturers of Ayurveda drugs and representatives from several educational institutions. In this meeting the BIS brought out some standards 
that has to be followed in manufacturing equipment and traditional medicine used in ayurveda therapies this is to ensure quality and streamline in the ayurveda industry see many people lack awareness on standards related to equipment and medicines used in ayurveda procedures and treatment and since traditional treatment centers are becoming popular today it is necessary to bring standards to safeguard patients well being and this is why the standards has been announced by bs okay this is all about the news now in this background let us quickly go through bureau of indian standards from prelims perspective c bureau of indian standards is the national standard body of india it is a statutory body established under the bureau of indian standards act 1986 note that this act was replaced with bas act 2006 so as of now the bureau of indian standards is governed by the bas act 2016 the bas is functioning under the union ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution note that the predecessor of bas was the erstwhile indian standards institution see all the functions of erstwhile indian standards institution were transferred to bas okay See the BAS was set up to carry out activities of standardization, marking and quality certification of goods. Here the term standardization refers to the process of creating standards to guide the creation of goods or a service. Okay. Now coming to the functions of Bureau of Indian Standards, the main function of BAS involves the standardization and certification of goods, articles, processes, systems and services. Apart from this, the BAS also formulates the indian standards which covers important segments of economy these standards help the industry in upgrading the quality of their goods and services apart from this the standards also helps in promoting standardization of goods and services present inside our economy okay this is all about the functions of bureau of indian standards and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about various aspects of bureau of indian standards now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the video that is to discuss preliminary practice questions today we are having four questions i will solve three of them and one will be a quiz question for you look at the first question this question is regarding green crackers here three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct look at the first statement green crackers release water vapor and don't allow the dust particles to rise see this statement is correct the green crackers are designed to have 30 percentage less particulate matter pollution and they release water vapor and it don't allow the dust particles to rise so first statement is correct now coming to the second statement they are produced using barium nitrate as an alternative for the banned chemical zeolite see this statement is incorrect the supreme court had banned barium nitrate which is an important raw material for producing crackers therefore the csr neeri choose to use potassium nitrate and zeolite instead of barium nitrate so second statement is incorrect now coming to the third statement the green crackers are completely pollution free see this statement is incorrect because the green crackers are not completely pollution free but they are 30 percentage less polluting than conventional fire crackers so third statement is incorrect here only first statement is correct so the correct answer for the question is option a only one moving on let's take up the second question here a description of particular initiatives given we have to find the description describes which of these four given initiatives now i'll read out the description it is an initiative of ministry of education aimed to provide psychosocial support to students family members and teachers for their mental health and well-being during the times of covid-19 pandemic this text is related to which of the below mentioned government initiatives option a kiran helpline option b manodarpan initiative option c manas mobile app option d raw app here the correct answer is option b manodarpan initiative so it was aimed to provide psychosocial support to students family members and teachers for their mental health well being during covid pandemic so the correct answer is option b now we will also look at other initiatives now coming to kiran helpline c kiran helpline is 24/7 toll free helpline launched by ministry of social justice and empowerment this helpline provide support to people who facing anxiety stress depression suicidal thoughts and other mental health concerns okay now coming to manas mobile app here manas stands for mental health and normalcy augmentation system it is a national digital well being platform 
this mobile app has been developed to promote the mental well-being of indian citizens okay now coming to raw app it is a mobile application that provides free information to the public on mental health care professionals and mental health care centers okay now moving on to the next question see this question is regarding bureau of indian standards here three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct look at the first statement it is a voluntary organization responsible for promoting industry growth without any regulatory authority cbas is a statutory body and not a voluntary organization and it has regulatory authority in certain sectors so statement 1 is incorrect coming to the second statement it formulates standards only for the manufacturing sector and does not cover services sector see this statement is incorrect because the bas formulates standards for a wide range of products including services so second statement is incorrect now coming to the third statement it grants certification by conducting testing or inspection see this statement is correct the bas conducts testing and inspection as part of its conformity assessment procedures and based on the assessment it grants certification to the products or services so third statement is correct here only one statement is correct so the correct answer for the question is option a only one this is a quiz question for you today i will post this quiz question in a community section try to answer it the answer for the quiz question will be posted in the comment section of the quiz question itself you can verify the answer and displayed here are the main questions for your practice go through the questions write your answers and post it in the comment section with this we have come to the end of the video if you found our video to be useful please like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe shankar is academy youtube channel thank you for listening